Hey, do you remember this? Oh, the gallo glass. This one I've been eyeballing since probably 2005 or so. I don't even know. Anyway, sold out. Blah. Guess what? Oh yeah, the Albion Gallo Glass. I never expected to own this at one point, let alone through the generosity of a single viewer, who's also one of my patrons and who wants to remain anonymous. But he sent me this sword, not asking anything in return. He just sent it to me. Here, that's yours. Just paid for shipping, everything, just... Wow. Honestly, I couldn't believe it until I actually took it out of the box. You know, there have been cases before where somebody offered something that they never followed up on, and this was the kind of thing that just seemed too good to be true. It's like, <laughs> I have no way, I mean, he seemed genuine, but even so, it just it did not quite compute. Like, you, you, you're going to send an Albion Gallo glass to me for free as a gift. Just, what? But yeah, that's exactly what happened. Here it is. I'm holding it in my hands. So, you know who you are. I've already talked to you uh, through the messages. But once again, thank you so very much. I'm honored and humbled and just I don't know what to say it's it's amazing and I'm very deeply grateful and appreciate it a whole lot and I will put it to good use there will be testing and a review video all of that good stuff for now I want to tell you a little bit about what it is. So this sword is part of Albion's Next Generation line, and the name comes from the Gallo Glass Warriors, which is an anglicized version of the Irish Gallo Glach, which translates to foreign warriors or mercenaries. These guys came from Scotland and also had Viking heritage due to Scandinavians intermingling with the local population. And they were essentially heavy infantry. So equipped with male hauberks, iron helmets, large swords. They also use the two-handed Sparth axe. And once again, you can see the Viking influence, much like the Dane axe, it was used in a similar fashion. They would charge at the enemy formation, much like a Highland charge, after the Kern skirmishers softened them up and disrupted the formation. And then the Gallo Glass would just rush in and try to break the enemy formation apart and do enough damage to cause them to flee. And then the skirmishers would pursue them and pick them off. You have a very distinct hilt and pommel, particularly the pommel is very typically Irish. You have that on both two-handed and single-handed swords. You see it in paintings. Here is one by Lucas de Heer, I think, Flemish artist, and also Albrecht Dürer. This is from 1521. And the other one depicts also 16th century Irish warriors. Single-handed Irish ring pommel swords often have this S-curve guard that you see here. And then the National Museum of Ireland, you have some nice examples of both single-handed and two-handed swords. There's a hypothesis that the ring pommel derived from concave wheel pommels, some of which were hollow. So basically all you would have to do is remove the face of the pommel and then you would basically come up with this. So you can see the tang of the sword goes all the way through the grip and then through this ring here and then at the end there's a peen block and it is then hot peened over top of it to secure it 
and keep it in place. It's quite common on Irish swords from that time period to see those flared quillons. So they widen toward the ends. Uh, they can either be upswept like this or sometimes they're, they're straight, but it's quite common that they widen. There's some really nice decorative touches on this reproduction here. They're quite simple geometric shapes, but they add a lot of flavor to this sword. It's this kind of tasteful decoration that is not over the top by any means. The black helps make it pop and just overall very, very elegant shape. Just one of the prettiest swords that Albion makes, in my opinion, or used to make. They don't make this one anymore. And this is also exceptionally light. This one weighs 1.15 kilograms. To put that into perspective, practice long swords with nylon blades like this usually weigh between 1 and 1.6 kilograms. So this is lighter than most practice swords. But I like that it still has quite a bit of blade presence, which makes a lot of sense for something this light with a, a fairly narrow blade. It makes sense to balance it this way. It's obviously designed as a cut and thrust blade, and so you want to be able to deliver a powerful cut. And although I would personally call this a long sword because of the grip length, you could also consider this to be a hand and a half sword, simply because of the usage. This is definitely light enough that you could use it with one hand, you know, in combination with a shield, say, or a targe, things like that. But you can definitely apply longsword techniques to this without issue. It's very agile, nimble, just feels great. This kind of pommel is not really comfortable to hold on to, as opposed to a sense stopper pommel, for example. But you don't really need to. There is enough space for both hands, and you can ride up on the ring a little bit with some fingers. So that works just fine. So again, you know who you are. Thank you very much. You're awesome. This is a really, really nice sword. And I hope everybody else also enjoyed a look at this. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Shiny. That's enough. Oh, come on. You see that? It's like one thread left. One thread left.